I hope I'm alive. <laughs> I did not check. Man, my cough was going away and I was coming back with a vengeance. <laughs> be right. I'm just going to do a quick post on the Discord. Oh, are you all over there? Let's bring you down, dock this window. Don't know if audio is coming through. I think audio is coming through fine. I'll find out. Somebody shout at me. So the question is. Actually, <laughs> so what I've been doing is reworking the hand stuff, so the snapping here, to see if we can reuse it in different places. Because at the minute it could only be used on the ladders and the climbing, but I realize if we've got valves and levers and stuff, then it'll be quite good to have it accessible for everywhere. So I went through and made it its own thing that could be attached to different objects. I thought that'd be pretty cool. My tags. For example, this. I was thinking like having a, a dial on the wall that when you grab it, the hand snaps to the position. Would look pretty good. However, when I press play for this one, so I simulate and then drop out, I get this error. So it says it can only be done on static objects. But obviously if it's moving, we're going to have to have it as movable.
which is a bit that I'm not too sure about straight away. The fan snap is set to movable, I believe. Box collision is movable. Uh, static. Okay, so didn't get the error. Um, hand snap. Play. That's okay. But I think at the minute, I think it's the grabbing. Is this what I was working on? At the minute, we do a check to see if the hand. If we're not grabbing anything, then it's going to be a climbable actor. But we need some kind of check to see if it's the right thing. So at the minute I've got it so we can climb any surface and then has tag. I think I might have to move this <coughs> into the, the grab component as a check. But ideally I prefer not to do that if I don't have to. Otherwise it's going to get pretty cluttered, but I do need some kind of check to do the set hand position. I wonder if that'll work. Try this. We need to fix that. It's doing the climbing. Whoa. What? As far as we still climbed. Enable climbing, we've got that set of true. Can we climb any surface? This is what we need to stop firing. <laughs> need some kind of check here. I could have a climbing system on this, which would work. Two seconds, guys.
I wonder if I should remove the can climb any surface thing and just do the tag. Then if I do that. I don't think. I'm glad I Yeah, even my ladders don't have a tag. That's what I thought they were using. Let's check the climbing. Gonna be do 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 do. No, no, don't have it. Try that. Chrysanth, hello. I just trying to figure out some climbing stuff right now. It seems to have bugged out. Not working with that tent. I am oh so very confused. Started rotating for some reason. Enable <laughs> climbing surface, go through. See, I haven't touched any of this, which is why I'm confused by it. Using the player's rotation now. So it has to be something to do with this snap hand. There it is. The question is why do they rotate? 
if the box collision is set to movable. Sure is. Hey, thanks for dropping by. I think it might be my movable stuff that's messing up. So trying to climb movable objects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll do that and then bring the radial wrap back in. Bless me. Let's try this. My hands are all gone, they're in the middle of the floor. So that might be an issue. Now that will be because. I'll put the movable hand snap. Seeing it movable. Grab. This is what I need. Basically, to duplicate this over, so if we're not grabbing, we go through. We'll try this. Target is hit actor. We want to be able to just reuse that actor for a few other things. If we can do that, it'll save a lot of time. And it means you don't have to reset everything up as well. Okay. Okay, that worked, but we're still climbing, so this is firing as well. The question is to do the check to stop this and go from there. So we're not climbing, so I don't think we need to do this, but I can't remember how I've got the I thought this was going through the tag. So hand snap, box collision. Wine. Okay. Delete the tag from there. Box collision ladder. Don't this let you do active tags? So we want to still be able to climb and then go from there. Can you take an object with a laser pointer and rotate it? As in like a physics object, like as though you would shoot it and then you can use the thumbstick to move it around in circles. Not with this template you can't. Because we're not using physics for any of this. The only thing that has physics is basically the characters jump. We do have grabbing from a distance though. Which is kind of almost working. No 
climbing, no climbing. Also no climbing. So we need to figure out where we can add the tag. Or at least the check. The other option is I just have a climbing hand snap and then a not climbing. That would work. Hit this one. Box collision tag. Fine. Comment. And then duplicate and snap. And then this one, we just remove that tag. So the check's being done inside of the blueprint itself, not the player. So we don't have to worry about it, which is how I'm thinking of it. So we won't have to do multiple checks here. Just kind of go through if it's got it. So, got and snap. We want to replace these with it. So actually, if I hide the hands, set them in a hidden during gameplay, and then we should be able to have it so we can't we can we can see the hands when they grab it. That should work pretty well. I go too soon. Climbing hands. Cool. And then we're not climbing. Excellent. So now we can set that up to do rotating. So we'll follow the controller and then we can rotate around. That would work. Lamb. So how's everybody doing? You all had a good day? Got distracted out the window. Somebody's got an order. So now with this one, for the radial, it would be a case of how do we set this up? So we can just get this to rotate and follow the hand. I think what we're going to have to do is feed through grab component. So if we have grabbed, we then disable the physics or do we just have its own? Turn up the audio. Is it not loud enough? I thought it was pretty loud already. I can boost it up a bit though. How's that? Hopefully that's better. <laughs> Plus, most of this is just me thinking. 
I'm trying to figure out where I'm going with it. It's redoing at some point. So we've got the climbing, we've got the hand snapping, we've got the radial. It's a case of how do we rotate this. What does the radial grab do? The idea is this is for stuff like valves. So you could grab it and then you could rotate it and get a value out of it to either activate something or move something else. Kind of like a basis of what you would need. So a radial, a lever, and then like a joystick is kind of the last things I'm thinking of doing for this. And I think that that's got quite a lot of things in it. Pretty sorted. But I'm just trying to think of the best process to go through and making this work. I kind of want to drag and drop. Like maybe add a component and then it'll just follow the hand. But I'm not too sure if I could just modify the grab component to be like, hey, we're, we're grabbing this. Oh, and I think you need to use some polar corners to do this. Yeah, we're not at that point yet. <laughs> Still trying to figure out the flow. This one was really get the hand snapping to work and then go from there. I was thinking about setting up a um, splash screen example as well. So I could look at that as a new level. Because there's that, or there's the grab component, which actually that's grabbing from a distance would be better to do. Get that sorted. So a moment. Gotta remember where I put my code. Moment. I only did this the other day. Grab from distance trace, we go through. release because the thing with the grab from distance is we look for the grab component so grab from distance component but it doesn't rotate based on that component so it's all a bit weird <coughs> movement graph grab from distance this can all be tidied up later on. Ah, that's what I was doing before. Setting up the pointer. So when we point, we spawn an Niagara system. And then we set the start and end position. So I've already got this, I think. So I've got something similar for our pointer, which is here, set point position. So this I'm using widget interaction for the last hit distance. Probably good one. Go through. left hand, we press the key, we spawn a pointer. This is going to have to be our motion controller left. Yeah, motion controller data. Left. I could do a check for this in a bit. Made it a little bit easier. Once I've done this spawning, actually, I can convert it to a function and then reuse it for the second part. I think that would work quite well. So, motion controller, we go through. Left hand, break. We get aim position, which our location. Aim rotation. I think that would be, which one is it? Um, Got this somewhere else. All right, I've got an example of it somewhere else I can reuse.
Oh, okay. Let's start. We need to get the forwards. We need to get the rotation, actually. So that would be... Try that. Right, let's just let's just plug that in and see what happens. Start position. I think the problem is going to be the end because I've got to get from the beginning of the controller and then push out from it. So like it's forward vector. Um. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna want to start plug that into something random. We'll be super short, but we should be able to see whether we spawn. Wait. Yeah. Oh, we've already got a line trace. What am I on about? Got. Grab from distance, we go through, oh, wrong one. Grab from distance, right hand, we go through. Here it is. So moving this is gonna be better then. Let's just copy that. See? We'll have to change the hands. We'll we'll do a check on the hands. But we'll leave it with this for now. That point we still want. This is what I was after. Do I need to do that? I don't think I need to do that. I can do that from here. Ah, oh, it's gonna fire every tick. It's gonna make multiple. Okay, I did the math for it. If your technique does not work, let me know. I'll explain it in detail. All right, if, if we get that far. Math is one of the worst things for me. Hate it. We go through. Get a component we hit. It's true. We only want to spawn this once, but then set our location. Let's try this. So. Can't do sequence because that needs to happen. Spell it. You update the positions. Hmm. What should we do with data? Right. I'm generally wondering if we could do something as sequence here. And then the spawn wants to do this. That needs to fire continuously. We go through. So I'm just trying to figure out whether it's worth doing after or inside of it. <laughs> so 
to be like this end. Like right here. Let's try it. We'll try it from in here. Can't hurt. We go up with spawn, menu laser. We do that once. Check to see if it's valid. If it is. Check to see if our point has spawned. We can turn this into a reference in a minute. Logo. Value start. In rotation. And then do that there so it goes forward. Actually, this the second one's going to have to be the hit point. Try that. I got. I don't know if this is going to work. I've got a feeling it might not. This won't reset though. That's what we're going to have to figure out. So I've got a feeling I will have to put it somewhere else. So we're getting the trace as long as we're pointing at it. Which is because we're not getting anything yet, because we're doing it too late. Do that before then. Like this. And that plugs in. End point. That works. Not smooth though. I think that's because I'm doing this from a timer. I know that works if we keep it there. So we're firing this from the controller actually. So we fire from the controller. In this case, we were going through. I could spawn the particle here at the beginning and then set the system inside of the distance trace. Then it knows it's actually spawned before it's starting to set it. But I think it's still a case of it's going to have to do it once. Ah! Did I have something like that? Then those wouldn't be there. We wouldn't need that. Check this. You go straight through. Spawn. Ah, uh, then we need some kind of release to reset it and then destroy the particle. 
We need a we need a reference for this anyway. Let's try it out. Basically, spawn at zero. We go through, and then we need a reference to set the Niagara system. Kind of like that. There we go. And then once we stop, it doesn't exist and we spawn a new one. Right from distance particle left. So we set it and there'd be something like this. Or a component. Oh, I don't have a froze. Hopefully not. Just my luck. Hey, there we go. Cool. Thing on the right, left one set up so we can press it. Excellent. When we're grabbing, nothing's happening, and then we go back. So that one even is valid. I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna set up an event dispatcher for this. Something like that. So I'm pretty sure I've got other things I could do with tidying up the released. Oh, so it's not. It doesn't think that event's firing. I could bind it and then have it listen. That might work from the grab. That works. I'm not too sure whether it's going to keep that 
or how to clear the bind. I don't think we need to clear it actually. So I was saying that would keep it tidy. And then if there's anything else that has to listen for release. Something like the climbing, actually. I could replace this with a bind as well. Definitely worth checking out. Now I can do, 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 do. Wallace. Seems a bit excessive in places. I'm wondering whether I could reuse the bind to just control both of them or use the motion controls to do a check. So feed through the motion controller in the hand as references and then on this end, like if it's equal to left, if motion controller is equal to left, then you destroy that component and then if it's not, it goes through and destroys the right. I think that would work and it would also allow me to replace this here, the release for climbing. So rather than having a custom event, it's just called from the place itself. That would work. They've got the release grab from distance here as well. I will try it. It can't hurt. Mickey, great lessons. Thank you. I definitely need to do some more. I release. So you kind of call try release and then go from there. Now this is a little off topic, but do you have any issues with planar reflections on the mirrors material when using VR UE5? Uh, to be honest, I haven't touched planar reflection in a very long time. I've, I've pretty much just stayed away from them, if I'm being honest. Most of my time these days is spent working with the Quest, so they're pretty high performance for that. 
So that's why I've basically avoided it. Motion controller. So now I don't, if I want to release anything, I don't have to do it from here. I could, I could move all of this to a different part of the map. It'll just fire. That would work really well for cleaning it up. Call, try, release. Work with the left hand for now. Motion controller, so we go through. There's somewhere else that also does a check. That's it. So having it like so, equal to left, there we can destroy it. So we can take these. Best part is, this will be able to, you can call this from any other blueprint as well. So that would work. False, destroy components. Component we go through. You, and then Any sequence. Yeah. Right. You. Grow from distance particle, right? And then go from there. So 
from now. Oh, it's not going to do it because there's no. There we go. Find parameter hands how much delegate is that what? There we go. Now I'm lucky. Go right, although it's not destroyed. Left, left working fine. So what did I miss on the right? Goes through the branch. Particle right, I did not change. The reference. Excellent. And what we can do is we can also fire this from our thumbsticks. So it will be those. So as soon as we pull, pull the thumbstick, we don't need our line traces anymore. There we go. Oh, it's not resetting. Thumbstick needs to reset. Try that. Excellent. And I can replace one, 
Release crap from distance goes through to the component, so we need that component. Otherwise, we've got to get the owner player in there. I might actually be able to swap all of this around. I can definitely remove this release climbing. And then just call try to release. Is climbing. Use a bind. Ah, oh, which one's it called again? Is it? Got one somewhere. There it is. Least for climbing listens. So in the event graph, <laughs> don't need that bit anymore. This will work through it. I already do the check. That's even better. The release for climbing, that starts to listen. And that will clear up this bit. Or the function release for climbs is not much necessary signature. Try this. There we go. So we try climbing and then we try the grabbing as well. We need to do a check if is grabbing. We just need to remove that grab line. Oh, push the wall.
Excellent. That improves things a lot. Impact points. Probably not using that variable anymore. Maybe I was. So if we're climbing, we don't want to. We don't want to spawn the trace. How long are we going for? I might have to cut it early. All right, where is our grab from distance stuff? So we go through here, grab from distance right. <coughs> so we need to check either here to say it is climbing or from somewhere else. At least grab from distance. Um, if I'm doing that here, I can move these. So that doesn't have to be there either. If I can keep all the code together, it's going to be much more readable for everybody else going through it. Let's try that. Still working like normal. Grow from distance. Grow. Because we're in the capsule. Gliding with ourselves. Nope. My impulse is still working. I think there's a bug in there somewhere. That makes things much easier to read. Although this this bit's an absolute mess. So if anything needs to know if the hand's releasing, we can fire it there. Tidies it up a lot. Started only fires once. So we need the triggered. We need that to fire for the um the line trace. I think I think that's much nicer to look at. Readable anyway.
that can stay as a reference. Control I have visibility, that's fine. Sweet, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. This whole section's a mess, needs a lot of cleanup. But at least everything's kept together. I'll tidy all this before I push the build up. Before I do it. Before it goes live anyway. So what I need to do now is do a check to see if the player's climbing to basically not fire the left hand. So I've got is climbing. Well, that doesn't fire anywhere else. I could do a single variable, just have it called is climbing, and then that would be fine. Pop that guy there. He's climbing. Check. Set. It's released. We're not climbing. So false. And then in the event graph, we have branch. Yeah. If we're climbing, do nothing. If not, go through. I'm back. What are we working on? Um, just doing some checks at the minute to try and improve quality of life on the plugin. But with the, I also cleaned up a lot of the the releasing stuff from the grabs. So now runs through an event dispatcher so I can fire multiple things and basically blueprints and can just listen and be like, okay, they've released the hand, just stop whatever you're doing. Which has improved the look of the blueprints, that's for sure. And it'll allow for a lot more versatility to it. It's fine. So the idea is, once we grab the ladder, I got the beam doesn't show, but because we're climbing, it's doing that. Okay. Ah, climbing check. So I don't even need that. I've already got checks. I've got hit actor left hand, then hit actor right. Hit actor left hand, 
get get act the right hand get we'll use the right hand we have the health component left Then I'm going to be that's fine. I'm going to need a way of improving this section. Simon, hey, I got my SpaceX buttons working on with your template. That's really cool. Was it was it a collision issue? I'd be interested to find out what was actually causing it. Exactly, just put sphere collision on the index finger and all works out. Awesome! That's pretty much what I suggested with the, the little tags and links and stuff. If we're climbing with the left hand, we do nothing. And that is right hand. I've already messed that up. Thing. This one. Uh, what do I call it? Climbing with left hand. Climbing right hand. I think. I would say I think, and then nothing ever, nothing ever works. You drop. It's definitely got some bugs in here somewhere. So we've got no pointer if we're climbing. We still have no pointer. Square peg, hello.
Let's try that. Now it's doing the check even if we're on it. I can't teleport now. I can't move. Some bug in here somewhere. Okay, so that didn't fire, which is making me think that it's the reset. This reset here. I'm trying to remember to talk. I keep I keep like concentrating on everything I'm doing. It makes it so difficult to actually think about stuff. Oh, I can't move. Oh. Um, through there. I think I can't move because it's not removing the mapping context. No, neither of them do. Square, Square Peg, I've been enjoying the template by the way. That's really good to hear. I really want to know what more people are doing with it. It's really, it's really fun. Ask this not just mm -hmm. Ah. 
It's going to tell me I need those invalids again, but we'll sort that out in a minute. going on does the release is not destroying the components let me think this there we go Pending kill. Uh, that's basically there's nothing there for it to destroy. I've been working on a simple VR kart racer, hence why I've been asking for vehicle support in the Discord. Have a heck of a time with it. Yeah, vehicles aren't exactly the easiest things to set up, but it's all about possession of the actor. So if you if you make a new actor that's got the the inputs and stuff sorted, obviously it's more difficult with VR. But you'll get the idea. And then um you you need to possess the actor, so you take control of it. And that's a case of just having the new controls inside of the vehicle. But it's a lot of like nested stuff. You're gonna have a new, you're gonna have to have a steering wheel that talks to the vehicle blueprint and that kind of thing. Once I grab, it doesn't fire <laughs> the release. I'm just butchering this right now. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with it. I think the VR expansion plugin had a vehicle example in it. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen that for a while, actually. To be fair, I never used it. Once version 1.0 of this is out, and I have it on the marketplace, I do want to add vehicles to it. I, there's a whole lot of stuff I want to do with this. I want to add another player that's physics-based, so you've got control over both of them. Vehicles... Gameplay demos, that kind of thing. Like, I just want to keep working on this, turn it into something pretty awesome. And this isn't working. How much will you be charging for it on the marketplace? I don't have a solid number yet. I'm trying to like price it quite well. But I know a lot of the ones that are on there already are, are like maxing out at about $100 for simple stuff. But the idea with this is to make VR accessible to everyone. So I want to probably like half of that. Maybe between like $40 and $50. 
the main idea is to get enough money from it that I can hire people to make like gun models and do like full gun rooms and that kind of thing. Should put a poll up if you can on Discord. If I put a poll up on Discord asking how much someone would pay for a plugin, the answer will be zero. <laughs> like it'll still be available on the Patreon. I'm not going to remove it from there. Just Patreons will get early access to more stuff. Like new features and everything else in between. Plus, once it's sorted, I want to do some probably like game jam stuff. Go from there. Save loads of time. That, that's the idea. Want to save time and want to make VR accessible to everyone? Like at the minute, it's only built for multiplayer, uh, for single player. Once once I've got enough funding from it, I haven't applied to Epic Grants. I'll get somebody on board to build the whole thing for multiplayer support as well. Or I might just do it myself once I've got 1.0 out of the way. <laughs> Been making a sword game for about a year now, 4.27. Decided to redo the entire thing in UE5 and better code. Yeah, it's a better way to do it. That's why I restarted this in UE5. I've cleaned the entire thing up. It's so much more modular now. If you don't want something, you literally just go to the data folder, open up character variables, and you basically turn it on and off what you want for the, pl the plugin. So let's say if you don't want to be able to climb, you just disable that, and now the player can't climb anything. And then go from there. You can grab from distance, turn them off. You can't climb and you can't grab from a distance now. So the idea is to just make it as easy as possible. Because most of my day is spent doing e-learning content with VR. It's kind of really useful to have something like this. Because it, one, it saves me time. And two, it can save everybody else time. Like the gaze interaction stuff, if you don't need it, literally just turn it off. So use gaze component, disable that, it turns off all the ticks. You're not you're not counting up timers or anything like that, it's just gone. It destroys the component, you don't need it. And then go from there. Also I've used VR for some project demonstrations and competitions. It really blows people's minds, it's still a new technology. It's still new. Just because people have it at home doesn't mean they actually try it, or the kids have it. That's the thing. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. Modularity is key. It saves people time. Like all the movement systems in there as well that I forgot to mention. You don't need all of those when building a game. You just pick one and then go for it. I was just sick of having to redo different movement types every time a client wanted something new. <laughs> Build it once, forget about it. That's the idea. It's the main thing with pricing as well. The whole thing's got to be accessible to everyone, easy to use, and affordable. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna charge people a hundred dollars just to start making a VR game. It's pointless. The idea is to build the build up what's out there, get people to think about new stuff, and then go from there. The flyer might come in handy when I get to the get to orbit. Flying would be great. The only thing I've got to do with that now I've mentioned it is I've got to disable climbing. When you use, so if I jump in, if I use it. And then we change to flying. What it'll do is it'll snap you to the floor when you jump in. It snaps to the floor and then it does not work. Why are we not working? I guess that's a bug to fix. He's like still grab stuff. There's my capsule. My capsule is updating. But my inputs are. Okay, now I'm getting distracted. Why is flying not working? Don't have anything else here. Yeah? 
movement graph. Get all of that. So mapping true set inputs. Check if we can fly. That check might be that check. So if I just turn off gravity, the climbing still won't work. Um, I'm not too sure what you mean. Let me double check why this isn't working either. I should be able to move around. We're going through here. I haven't tested this since I put the climbing in, so I'm wondering if it's... Why we're not moving. Well, this is a bug. The input fired for move up, but my player didn't move. I don't think I've got anything in here. Do my other movements work? That was board only. Yep. Shift movement. Smooth locomotion. Oh. Smooth locomotion and teleport. Yep. Flying. No. Ah. I am so confused at what broke. Oh, I can't climb because I disabled climbing. Ooh, if I disable climbing, I need to fix them hands. Nothing of that.
So the question is, why can't my character fly? Because that, that needs fixing for the next push anyway. My values are working, it's just my player's not moving. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to do another is flying check somewhere. So I'm wondering if my player is being affected by something. Hmm. Simon, if if you were able to, you might as well just post it in one of the channels. <laughs> There's a channel called Show Off Your Work, which could be pretty helpful for it. Post it in the Patreon channel. Yeah, that would be a really good one. I don't think the link will work on the YouTube. I think I've got it disabled so you can't, because I was having issues with um, random bots spamming it. So I don't think it'll work. Okay, for some reason I need to figure out what's going on with the climbing. Climbing the flying. I think, it's, I think it belongs to the climbing. I think climbing's screwing something up. Like these. Hmm. I'll look into that flying because I didn't realize that was an issue. Well, that doesn't affect anyone. I haven't checked that in the last build. I was playing around with a character a while back, so I wonder if I've screwed something up in here. Hey, there it is, max fly speed. I set my max fly speed to off. I don't know which way my input's going. Ah, 
I've got to fix some input somewhere. Is it flying and then... Why my inputs are split? Is it my character because I'm starting sideways? Oh, that's the thing. Because my arrow's pointing forward for some reason. When I, I turn sideways. I'm going to have to look into that. No, it's still flipped. I think it's this. Oh, no, it's not. Left and right are inverted. What is going on? This was working absolutely fine, so I don't know why I've got to change this around. Oh, inverted the wrong things, apparently. Fly forward should be the right way to do it. I have to do some investigating. But I think once I've done this and the flying is working again, I think I'm going to call it. Get something to eat. There we go. That's better. We're pretty sure it's climbing. It's going to work as well. Oh. Apparently not. So climbing needs to do a check to see if you're flying. Breath. Climbing. Flying. Cool, that works. So if you're flying, you can do it and then you can let go. It won't have physics because it's not built into it. But it'll stop where you are. I've been trying to figure out a way to get it so if you release, like if you push back, that it will move you in that position. But I think that's another challenge for another day. Thing. I think for now I'm going to wrap up because I can hear my daughter crying and I've got a feeling she's hungry. Don't worry, my partner is with her. <laughs> she's not on her own. <laughs> so I think I'm going to call it there. It's also getting pretty late. Um, cool, at least we fixed flying. Optimized some blueprints. Worked on the grab from distance stuff, kind of fixed some of that and made it a little bit nicer. Out of the particle beams, or the beam effects, pointers. Seems pretty good, I think. 
Simon Hensworth, video published. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. All right, let's call it there. Uh, I think we've covered quite a good amount of stuff. Um, before I get distracted by anything else. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'll see you later on. Make sure to hang around Discord. Um, I'll probably put up a new build for the plugin. Definitely not the end of this week. I've got stuff on tomorrow and Saturday. So. Probably end of next week, I'll try and get some more bug fixes done and then upload it from there. And then I think I'm going to start trying to get the documentation sorted so I can get it on the store for, for people to start jumping on too. I think it'll be a good place to start. Alright everyone, hope you all have a good night, evening, day, morning, whatever time zone you're in. But um, yeah, speak to you all later. Bye. <laughs>